el destino que nuestro disfrute quiera lograr Representamos la fuerza y una mente abierta para aceptar Que los cambios representan nuevas aventuras que hay que conquistar Todos los días hay por qué Parte de esta gran empresa que crece y progresa Desarrollando cultura, llevo esta bandera para trascender Nuestra labor con altura, que orgullosamente me ha hecho crecer Focus your mind. We want you to cook us a dish that is worthy of winning the competition. Whoever cooks the best dish today, I think you guys know what I'm talking about, <laughs> gets this, an immunity pin. Or should I say, the immunity pin. It's so hot in here. There's hibachi grills going everywhere. Everyone's got ovens on. Everyone's got stoves on. We're running out of time now. That immunity pin's so close, I can taste it. <laughs> I am making pistachio and strawberry eclairs. I am a baker and I'm obsessed with shoe pastry. I've got my shoe in the oven, I've got my gel setting in the freezer, and I've got my creme pat chilling. So next step is to temper some chocolate for some garnish. The master chef no no to melt chocolate in the microwave. <laughs> the master chef kitchen's really hot. It's going to be really hard to control that temperature. Fingers crossed this works. I need to take this from just an eclair to a masterpiece. Amelia, it's your time to shine. This dish totally represents me as a cook. It is understated, but it is technically driven. This is what I love to do. What is that? That is a pistachio and strawberry eclair. Stunning. It's packaged beautifully. It's breathtaking. It is mind-blowing. Can you guys see that? Oh, but that's a goodness. front cover of a magazine right there.
I'll say straight off the bat, you've nailed the eclair. Thank well you. Done. Thanks. The balance of flavour, the tartness, balanced with the richness of the, the pistachio cream, the creme pat, the consistency was just absolutely gorgeous. It's amazing. Thanks. That is flawless. Like, it's absolutely flawless. Round one, you're right on top of the pack. Thank so you. you should be so happy with yourself. Well done. I've never seen an eclair so decorative, but it's a dessert. You know, it's the MasterChef winning dessert because the texture inside is difficult to nail. And what you've done with the chocolate, uh, it's, it, it, it's textbook. What a way to start this competition because whoever wins season 12, 2020, deserves two of those trophies because of the competition that's standing behind you. That, right now, has put a big target on your back. <laughs> Thanks, well done. Gordon. Thank you. Amazing. Thanks. Woo! Great job. Thank you. It's really good. Thank My you. God. I've never seen an eclair that elevated. In 90 minutes. And the heat of the kitchen and the temper of the chocolate and the discs, the run outs, the cream. Wow. Here you go. <laughs> well done, Amelia. Thank you. Pretty good meals. Amelia, I said it to the judges. I've never seen an eclair like that. That was art but it was art that tasted phenomenal. Thank you. Danny. Wow, wow, wow. That looked delicious, <laughs> wasn't it? Like, 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 it didn't look like delicious. Hello, everyone. Hello, hello, hello. My name is Itzel Alcantar. I am the coordinator of um, Guadalajara, Mexico, of this I practice here in Mexico. And, well, I just want to say hello to everyone. I just want to say hello. I want to greet you. I want to say hi. I want to read your comments. I want to read your questions. And, you know, guys, you know the drill. We are here to learn. We are here to have fun. We are here to practice our skills in English, our listening our comprehension and learn many delicious things so you guys can prepare in your house okay so i want to say hello to well our usuals in here i already saw one of our best users with maria that she oh she is always here in our international high school uh then i saw claudia hello claudia oh she says that she is from villavicencio excellent hello everyone I want to say hello to all of our beautiful users. Please let me know from what city, from what country are you guys connected? We have people all over the world, right? We usually have people from Mexico, of course. We have people from Colombia. We have people from Venezuela, Chile, Panama, República Dominicana, Peru, Guatemala, Bolivia. You know, <laughs> we have like so many countries connected in here in this international high school today thursday may 11th right so thank you guys thank you guys because because of you we always make like these beautiful like workshops online and we want to even do like better and greater things for you to learn so let me say hello to some people here oh i see sergio hello sergio thank you for being here I see Aldair, hello Aldair, he says that he has his ingredients ready and that he is from Barranquilla. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Raise your hand, raise your hand, who has their ingredients ready? I want to see how many people already paid attention to the instructions, right? And already have like their ingredients like right around uh, their kitchen or maybe the fridge. Nani, hello. She says that she's from Barranquilla as well. Excellent. Please let me know from what city, from what country do you guys are connected this evening? Because, well, I just want to practice with you guys. I just want to make you like welcome because you are part of these beautiful and enormous uh, Focus Your Mind family, right? See, 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 let's see. I'm not reading your comments, guys. I'm waiting for your comments. I am ready to uh, read your questions and have fun, right? Have fun. Okay, guys, so uh, what do you think? <laughs> what do you think we are going to learn this evening? Hmm. I see like here in the images, like right here, 
here in the corner, I see like some specific ingredients. I don't know, like, what do you think we are going to do? Maybe is it going to be like a dessert? Maybe, I don't know. What do you guys think? Oh, hello. Well, I see a lot of people from Villavicencio. Hello, everyone from Villavicencio. From what other city do we have? Maybe do we have users from Guadalajara? Maybe we have users from Bogota. Maybe we have users from Lima. I don't know. I don't know. I want to see. Guys, make some noise. Make some noise, okay? Because we have so many things to do. <laughs> so many things to learn today. So I want to see. Uh, oh, Jason. Okay. Hi, from Tabio. Okay, where is Tabio exactly? Pau says that she's from Guadalajara. Hello, Pau, and welcome to this international high school. I see people from Mexico. Thank you. Okay. Bogota. Mariana says that she is from Bogota. Okay. Hello, everyone, and welcome. Mr. Richard. Uh, he says that he's from Santa Cruz, Bolivia. Hello and welcome. Ana Ramirez from Bogota. Carol, she says that she's from Barranquilla. Okay. Hello, Itzel. Deeper. Well, like, what is your name, Deeper? I live in Guadalajara. Hmm. Israel says that he's from Baro Barano. Okay. Bolivia. Excellent. I think we have our usual Elizabeth from Venezuela. Great, great. I want to see people maybe from Spain, maybe from Chile, maybe from Brazil. Oh, God, that would be like so cool. So cool to be here. Okay, excellent. Okay, guys, so like everyone, ah, hello, Danny. <laughs> okay, so everyone, what do you think are we going to learn this evening? Let me know. People from Bucaramanga, excellent iPhone, please put your name so I can say hi to you. <laughs> but he says that he's from Bogota. Excellent. Now we have people from Barranquilla. Great, great, great. Okay, guys, type in, type in. Now, what do you think we are going to learn this evening? <laughs> we already mentioned like some secret ingredient that we have here in my images. We already know that it has to do like with cooking, right? Right. What do you think we, you guys are going, we are going to learn? Make some questions, make some comments. <laughs> okay, it says hi from Puerto Colombia. Excellent, from Soledad. Wow, okay, I see people from Juarez. Wow, so great, so great. Excellent, excellent. Tacos? <laughs> no, Sergio, we're not going to talk about tacos because we don't usually use, you know, like these fruits, <laughs> these specific fruits in tacos, right? Okay, what else? What else? Let me know. Let me know in the comments. Here we see some images. We are seeing some images here, you know, like on the screen. I don't know what it comes to mind. Marta says that she's from Medellin. Hello, Marta, and welcome. Okay, guys, I'm going to start giving you clues. <laughs> we are going to learn many things about, ah, I see Jason says, vocabulary in a restaurant. So close. <laughs> so close. Uh, we are going to talk about the things we do inside a kitchen, and we are going to learn a recipe that involves this fruit right here, right here, this one right here. We have to do like a recipe involving this, okay? Kitchen vocabulary, yes, yes, coconut water, uh, something like that, <laughs> something like that, guys. Okay, so let's start with today's topic, okay? So uh, for this, I'm going to uh, call on stage our first guest of the evening. I think many of you know her and please welcome her and say hi to her and, you know, like start preparing those questions so we can like uh, take advantage of her knowledge, right? So please, please, let's welcome on stage Ms. Estefali Alarcón. She is the coordinator of the beautiful city of Barranquilla. And she's here to share with us like lots of important information about this region and obviously about the kitchen. So hello, hello, Stephanie. How you been? How are you? Hey, gang. So sorry to be here today. Hello, hello, everybody. I'm so happy to be here with all of you guys. This night is going to be amazing. I hope that you really enjoy all the activities that we plan for you today. So Excel, today everything is going to be about food, recipes, 
all about delicious things. So, Excel, what is your favorite food? I would like to know. Oh, okay, that's an easy one. Okay, so obviously it has to be like a Mexican dish, right? <laughs> and my favorite food are green chicken enchiladas. Oh, I God. love green chicken enchiladas and I could like eat them every single day of my life. That's also enjoyable. I would like to taste it and I'm sure that I will love like you, okay? So guys, hello everybody. Yeah. What is your favorite food? I would like to know guys, please write it on the chat. I would like to know what is your favorite food. So I'm going to read all the comments that you write. So please tell me what is your favorite food. Oh my God. So sushi said Sergio, amazing. That's so delicious. Chicken soup. Okay. Amazing, guys. So who more? Okay. So chicharro, salchi, papa, pizza. Sancocho, oh my God, that's so delicious, it's so yummy. Okay, who more, who more? Please write on the chat, Who? what is your favorite food, okay? So please tell me, fish, oh my God, what kind of fish means? Lasagna, coconut rice with fried chicken, rice, salmon, tacos, pavillon, okay. Please, I need to know what is that, okay, guys? I'm reading everything. Hamburger, coconut rice, fried fish, salad, okay. Okay, okay, guys. So everything looks so delicious, so enjoyable. So now I would like to tell you a little about our culture and he and the closeness we have with the recipe that we're going to prepare today. Okay. On the Atlantic coast, we usually eat coconut rice when we go to the beach for special celebrations or simply. Uh, because we think it was sweet, a good fried mojar, of course. So for today, we're going to prepare an excellent recipe. Uh, so if you have paper and pencil, please take them and take notes because this is going to be on fire, okay? So today we are going to prepare a typical dish of our city, Barranquilla, of course. And there is no more costeño than a good dish of coconut rice. Would you like to learn how to prepare it? Okay, so today is the day. It's a good day to cook, guys. So let's start. Here we have the ingredients that we're going to need. So the ingredients that we're going to need are salt, rice, sugar, coconut milk, if you don't have coconut, but the idea is that you have a coconut, okay? Of course, that's the principal ingredient water and rising, but this part is optional if you like them. And another one is the uh, compact brown sugar or panela, like we know here in Colombia, okay? But what exact measurement will I need of each of the ingredients? Okay, so it's important to say that in English, we have different measures in this, in this case, we are going to learn about the nature for the food that are uh, different from the nature of length or distance. This is important to clarify, okay? So the two most used units of wide measurement for cooking are the ounce and the pound. But for today, we're going to learn about imperial units. Let's start with some key words that is important that you know, okay? So here we have teaspoon, tablespoon, cup, gallon and quart. These are the measurements in imperial units that we're going to use today. So I would like to give you some examples to know how to use it, okay? So for example, we're going to start with the first one that is teaspoon. In that case, we can say one teaspoon of salt. We also can say one tablespoon of peanut butter, or we can say one cup of cereal flake. Also, we can use one gallon of water, or it's useful to say uh, one quart of milk, okay? So guys, just to take into account, most recipes in the USA use volume rate measurements, okay? In imperial units like teaspoon, tablespoon, that which was the key words that I gave you before. Most other countries use the metric system with units such as liters and millimeters, okay? 
But for the recipe, we're going to use the following quantities, okay? So here you have the ingredient, guys. Please write it. Take note of all of that. So we're going to start with one coconut, or you can use coconut meal if you don't have the coconut, a two cup rice, two tablespoons or a quarter cup sugar, one and a half teaspoon salt, one a half cup rising. Remember that that part is optional if you really like it. Three cups water and of course one panela. Okay, so guys, this recipe going to be amazing. I promise. I recommend you try this recipe if you have the ingredients on hand. Please try it, and if not, say this recipe and try it later. Okay, you will not regret it. So, Ixay, are you there? Uh, yes, yes, I'm still here. I'm here. Hello. Okay, so, what do you think about make a little activity? I would like to know if they are really paying attention to all the things that I am teaching them today. What do you think? Okay, okay. Yes, yes. I like this idea. So, guys, I hope that during the whole international high school, you have been taking notes because we are going to constantly uh, do like small quizzes or small activities for you to interact with us. And of course, like take note of the ingredients. And if you have like any questions about the, you know, about the culture, about the dish, about the ingredients, please type them in the chat so I can read them in a few. But go ahead, Stephanie, go ahead. Let's do this activity. Let's do yes, it. So, okay, guys, I know that most of us like riddles. For that, I brought some base, some activity based on the ingredients that I mentioned a while ago. Okay, so let's see if you really pay attention. And we're going to start with the first one, okay? So the idea here is that you try to guess what could be the answer of the ingredient that I'm going to mention, okay? So please write it on the chat. I would like to know what do you think that could be the answer. So the first one is, and why? By another snowman. And wet by another sunscreen. And store in the fridge, but and no yogurt. And add to red bacteria, but and no sugar. And something you can drink, but and no water. So what do you think? What could be? Please write it on the chat. What do you think that could be the ingredient? So please write it on the table. So Andre said coconut mm, could be. Israel said milk. Carmen said milk. Okay. Okay, guys, so in that is yes, you are in correct way. So good job, Ryan. Yes, it's milk, okay? Good job. That's it. My God, these guys are on fire. So now, please, uh, we're going to pass to the next one. In that case, I'm going to put, show you another different riddle, okay? So, and a small, but I'm not a baby. And wrinkled, but I'm not an old person. I often come in a small box, but I'm not a brave fat cereal. I'm dry, but I'm not by the towel. I'm a fruit, but I'm not an apple. So please write it on the chat. What do you think that could be the ingredient that I mentioned, okay? Remember all the ingredients that I mentioned a while ago. So please write it on the chat. What do you think that could be the answer for this riddle? So please tell me. I'm going to read all the comments that you write. So go ahead, guys. What could be? Remember, and a small, but I'm not a baby. And wrinkled, but I'm not an old person. I come in a small box, but I'm not a breakfast cereal. What could be? Okay, my God. Yes, these guys are really on fire. That's little rising. Good job, guys. And okay, want to pass to the last one activity that we prepare for you today. Okay, so the last one riddle is, uh, this is something that looks like sugar, but it's definitely no sweet. No way is used to add flavor in olden days, it preserves meat. So what do you think that could be? Okay, so Nani said salt, Maylee said salt, my God. Really, these guys are really on fire, it's Excel, are you there? 
I'm still here. I'm still here. Yes, I think our Why users are like really, really intelligent because they were paying, paying attention. And I would like to mention something like a fun fact, uh, because you said that we were going to need compacted brown sugar, right? And you guys over there, you guys know them as panela. But like for me here in Mexico, and I think my users are going to mention it. For me, a panela is a cheese, but we know it as uh, as piloncillo. So, like, if we have users uh, from Mexico, uh, part of the recipe, uh, we're going to use, like, that brown sugar that we know as piloncillo, but over there, they know it as panela, okay? Just like a fun fact, fun fact. Excellent, excellent. Okay, so let's see uh, if we have, like, any questions. Doubt? No, nope, I don't see questions or doubts, Stephanie, but in, if they do, I'm going to be calling you right back because I know that you have like more information to share. Thank you so much, Stephanie, for like this first part of the international mm -hmm. high school. Okay. Nothing. Bye. <laughs> okay, guys, guys, what do you think? Um, do you guys have like these ingredients in your house? Like, I think everyone has like salt, sugar water, rice. I think like, like you guys have it in your house, in your kitchen, maybe. Uh, probably only like the hardest thing that we will need, it would be like the coconut, right? It would be the coconut. But as Stephanie said, you guys can use like coconut milk from the grocery store. Obviously, uh, we will have like a different taste, a different flavor, but it works similarly. <laughs> um, so, so yeah, so if you have like a coconut or the coconut meal from the grocery store, it's fine. Okay, guys? Excellent. So we're going to take a break. Remember to please, please, please uh, comment your questions and doubts about this recipe and any, everything that you want to know. But we are going to take a break because you guys know it. We are going to do a survey. I want you guys to please help me answer the question that will appear on your screen so I can know from what countries and from what cities you guys are from. Please let me know. Are you guys from Mexico, from Guatemala, from Panama, Dominican Republic, Colombia, Bolivia? Do we have people from Peru, Chile, Spain, someone from the United States, maybe? I don't know. I don't know. I want to see people connected. I see a lot of people from Colombia. That's great. That's great. I see second place Mexico. Uh, and I see like a match between Bolivia and Peru. Where are the users of Bolivia and Peru in the other countries? Yes, I would like to know. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you guys for answering this survey because it helped me understand our population, right? So it helped me understand a little bit more about you and what interests you. And now we have our second survey of the night. You guys know it, okay? Now let me know, from what part of Colombia are you? <laughs> Most of our users are connected in Colombia. So please let me know, like what kind of users do we have? Do we have people from Bogota? Oh, obviously we have Barranquilla in the house. I see a lot of you guys connected. Cúcuta, Medellín, Pereira, Cali, Villa Vicencio. And if you're like me, please, please help me out and answer the one that says that you are not from Colombia. Right, right? Excellent, guys. Excellent. Yes, welcome. Welcome all of the Latin American people. And outside of um, Latin America as well, because we usually have people from, from Spain or from somewhere in the European Union, you know, in the US. So something like that. Excellent, guys. Excellent, guys. So please, please let me know. Yes, I know. Barranquilla is in the house. Uh, Sandra says that he's from Bogota, beautiful city. It is. It is quite beautiful. And I am like jealous of your weather because right now I am sweating. Like, seriously, like over here is really, really hot. So, like, yes, I, I'm feeling like a marshmallow, marshmallow on a fire can, you know, you know, kind of like that. Yes, yes. Okay, guys, so please let me know all your questions and all your doubts in the comments because I want to interact with you. I want to know a little bit more about yourself. Please, please, please. But in the meantime, in the meantime, we are going to continue with this international high school. You guys already have the ingredients. You guys already have the measurements. But what else do we need? 
And that is why I am calling on stage Miss Andres Murillo. She is also a coordinator here at Barranquilla, right? And she's here to help us prepare this amazing dish, this coconut rice. So hello, Sandri. Good afternoon. How are you? Well, evening. Evening for you. How, how are you? Today? Hello. Good evening, Sam. So happy to be here in this international high school. I know, I know. I'm starving. I am hungry. And I know our users are as well. So please, Andre, what do you have for us? Like, what are our next steps? Oh, yes, our next step, we're going to try to earn more information related to what are the most common birds we use, try, or when we try to explain those recipes to other people. Also, some specific grammar point, and maybe some detailed specific points that we need in order to have a better dish. Oh, excellent. Okay, guys, so remember to please, please, please pay attention, take some notes because you guys will need this information later on in this international high school. So, Sandri, I know that you have like many things to share with us. So the stage is all yours and I'll be right back in a few. I will just go check like in my kitchen, like we have all the ingredients here. Okay. Okay, you better make sure of that. Okay. Great. So guys, I consider this is a great pleasure for being here in this important event. Uh, firstly, um, before I begin, I want to just only cheer up people that is here in the chat tonight. And um, we're having, for example, Sandra Ospino. Also, we're having Leonardo. Hello, Leonardo. Hello, Karina. Hello, Mayra, Tati. Uh, I can see many people from around uh, the country and maybe other, obviously other countries that are here tonight trying to earn new information related to this exciting topic. And obviously the idea, you guys, is just only, not only to see the information, but more than that, just participate and maybe put that into practice. That would be very good for you if you that made this experience real for you, okay? So guys, so let's go and start right now. We're gonna move on where next information we're having tonight is just the verbs in the kitchen, guys. So what are the most common verbs that we usually have in the kitchen? What are those verbs about? So I wanna try to explain that with you tonight and I need you to pay close attention to this because it's very important for you to earn it and also put it into practice later. So the first verb I'm gonna try to explain to you is the verb to hit. What is the verb hit? So as here we can see hit is just only the action of turning on your stuff, increasing the temperature of the food, and obviously try to make it cooked. So as you can see here in the picture, which is just only a pot that is on the stove, and you're just only hitting the inside or the content of that pot. That is the verb to hit. But obviously we're having more verbs to go ahead. So we're having also another verb that one can say, the verb to be. What is the verb to be? Can you see in the picture? Yes, to be is just only the action of mixing in a rapid way, all the ingredients into, in order to find a very well a point of those flavors. The mixture we can get from beating is really, really good. We're gonna prepare, for example, cakes, or we're gonna use a specific utensil, for example, a mixer, or maybe just like a blender. If you want some juice, you can also beat, or maybe in a special cream, you have to also beat in the kitchen, okay? So do not forget this verb is the verb to beat, okay? We're having another verb that is also important, very simple, is the verb to pour. As you can see here, it's just only, Pouring, it is only putting inside the recipient some liquids. For example, today I'm gonna to try to help you with my sign language. So imagine that, for example, you have like a cup and you want to pour some coffee. So you just only pour the coffee inside the cup. Also, we can pour many other liquids. For example, we can pour some water, we can pour juice, but guys, let me know in the comment, what do you usually pour when you are in the kitchen? In my case, every morning I have to pour milk and also I have to pour coffee. 
That is a must for me every single day. But you guys, what do you usually pour? For example, um, maybe it could be um, juice, or maybe um, on weekends you pour beer, or maybe you can pour, for example, um, it could be Coca-Cola. Do you know what is the sound of pouring Coca-Cola? Do you like that sound? Yes, obviously it's very delicious when you hear that pouring Coca-Cola. Obviously we are here having a William. Yes, William says water. Yes, we pour water. We pour orange juice. Yes, or soda says Adair. Uh, also, we can say um, lemonade. Yes, we pour lemonade when we're so hot, we just only pour it. That action is the verb to pour. Okay, so guys, do not forget it. Okay, next verb for tonight, we're gonna try to understand what is the verb to chop. As you can see here, to chop is just only cutting the food into pieces. As you can see here in the picture, we are cutting or chopping meat. But also we can chop many other things. For example, guys, let me know in the chat what other foods we can chop. Imagine, for example, that you are preparing, a, um, for example, a soup. And you are imagining that you are gonna have that delicious soup that here in the coast we say sancocho, okay? Or maybe mondongo. So to prepare that, you have your pot, you pour some water, you chop some vegetables, okay? But which vegetables or what vegetables do you, you or I mean, do we need to chop in order to have a very delicious soup? So we can say that we chop um, onions, yes? Or we can chop um, potatoes, yes? Or we can chop um, maybe garlic, yes? Coriander, celery, Carrots. Yes, there are many vegetables that we can chop into pieces in order to have that dish. Okay, so do not forget the bird to chop. Right? Very good, guys. So let's going to move on with the next bird we're having tonight, and it's the bird to add. It's very simple to add. What is that? It's just only putting inside of that recipient or inside of that did something more. Putting two things together, one thing to over the other, okay? So imagine that we are, for example, thinking about the cup. I have my cup, I pour some coffee, and then I add some sugar. Yes, I add some sugar, okay? In the case of the soup or sancocho, we are chopping the vegetables, and then we add all these vegetables inside the pot. That is the verb to add. That is that simple as you can see is the verb to add. But are all these the verbs that we're having tonight? No, we're having more because it's very important for you to understand what other verb we can use, but more according to the dish that we're preparing today. So the next verb we're gonna have today is the verb to stir. Have you ever seen this verb before? Or maybe have you ever heard about it? The bear stir. What is a stir? So continue with the example that you are, for example, having your cup of coffee. Okay, to continue with that, you add some sugar and then you stir that sugar. Okay, obviously to make it sweet. Okay, that is a stir. Just only moving uh, all around to one side to the other inside the pot <clears throat> with a specific utensil. You can use. Uh, four, you can use uh, maybe like a spoon, obviously, to uh, stir the liquid. And talking about that, Sancocho, you have your pot, you have your ingredients inside, and you stir that pot, obviously, that soap, with a wooden spoon. And that is stir, yes? So, Easy or difficult, guys? Obviously, it is so easy for you to understand what is the stir, okay? So now you remember, okay? To, uh, obviously, to stir, okay? And the next bear, we have to remember to cover. What is to cover? Look at the picture. Look at the picture. What is to cover? Covering, covering. What is to cover? It's just only when we are cooking and we're having a pot. We just only 
cover it with the cover by itself, by, by, by the way, sorry. So we cover it to make it better the cooking, okay? So the only action of putting on the cover, on the pot, that is to cover. So remember in the case of we are preparing the sancocho, we're having <clears throat> the pot. We're pouring water. We chuck the vegetables. We add the vegetables. Yes, we stir the soup and then we cover that soup. Yes, but then what happened when we cover something? What happened then? Do you really know, guys? Let me know in the comments. What happened when you cover the pot? What happened when you cover the pot later? Later, what is the bear or the action that happened? Or what happens when we cover the pot? Let me know in the pot what do you think could be to heat to heat is similar to heat but it's not to heat is to boil okay to boil as you can see in the picture what is to boil to boil is just only the action of making of that food as hot as possible in order to have some bubbles on the bottom when you have that bubbles on the bottom that is to boil, okay? For example, the water boils when it gets mm, 100 degrees Celsius, okay? So the water is boiling, okay? So we can also boil the coffee, okay? Or we boil water to make some coffee, okay, also. Uh, we also boil the soup when we are cooking the soup, okay? Obviously we boil and that is the action of the verb to boil, but here we can have, for example, the verb to heat and the verb to boil. So guys, is it the same or is it different? What do you think? To heat and to boil is the same or is different? Please let me know right now in the chat if you see or understand if it's different or it's similar or what, what do you think? Heat versus boil. Is that the same? We're having Manuel says different. Okay, Manuel. Mm, yes, it's different. Sandra Os Sandro Ospino, it's different. Very good, Sandra, it's different. Jason, different. Mm, what else? Fry is different. What else? And Leonardo is different. Yes, guys, different. And what is the difference? We only need to know what is the difference. So guys, remember, when we heat, it's just only becoming hot. But, but when we boil, we're just only making it with the bubbles. Making it boil is making it to the degrees of boiling, okay? So that is the difference, okay? It's obviously very, very, very hot to the point that we're having or we are or we can see some bubbles on the surface, okay? That is the difference. But very good, guys, you're so smart. You were able to understand the difference. Great, excellent for that. But these are not the only ones. We're having more. What are some other verbs that we can have here? So guys, pay attention to the last verbs that we're having tonight because some, I mean, all of them, I mean, both are very interesting when we're preparing this delicious recipe, the coconut rice. What are these verbs about? So the next verb is the verb to fluff. Have you ever heard about the verb fluff? Yes, to fluff. What is to fluff? Because I've never seen this verb before. So fluffing is just only moving the foot from the bottom to the upper side of the pot. Yes, it's just only moving around, okay? The food in order to make it like fresher, to make it have some air, to make it more cooler or to make it more softer, more compact. So if you're gonna prepare your coconut rice, remember that it's essential for you to cover your, your pot, okay? Wait some minutes and then you open it or uncover it and then you fluff the rice okay you fluff the rice okay sandra says esponjoso yes could be is when you move the rice in order to have some fresh air to become esponjoso yes you're right y luz marina me está dando hambre yes luz marina 
I, I agree with you, Luz Marina, exactly. But obviously you will be able to do it later and then we can share that, okay? Very good, Luz Marina. So remember, fluffing is just only moving in order to make it fresher, okay? But then we're having another very interesting verb. I don't know if you've ever heard about it, but we have the verb to scrape. What is the verb to scrape? What is the verb to scrape? So <clears throat> imagine that you're cooking your coconut rice. Then you finally find that it's finished, that it's ready. But when you scrape, you just try to get the down or the bottom or the rice that is just sticked to the bottom of the pot to get to the higher or the upper part, uh, part of the pot, okay? So that specific rice that is on the bottom here in Barranquilla is essential or is a must for the coast people because we call that kind of rice cucayo. Cucayo is the kind of rice that we're having is more like crunchy, also like a little bit burnt. But here is very common to see people fighting for cucayo. And that is what you get when you scrape the coconut rice, okay? That is a scrape. Did you understand, guys, what is to fluff and what is to scrape? I hope you do it. Obviously, I love cocayo. Jason says, yes, exactly. Exactly, that is very delicious. I really like it too. Cocayo, yes, Joanna, that's right. So that is what we get when we are scraping, okay? But when we are preparing this delicious dish, we are not only thinking about verbs. We need to convey this recipe with other, some grammars that we need to in order to be or get understood. So what are those, these, or what are these structures that we need to be understood in the case of explaining this recipe? So let's pay attention and it's gonna see what are some adverbs of sequence? Have you ever seen these adverbs of sequence? Maybe yes because they are not difficult, they are quite easy, but let's gonna see what are all these verbs of sequence. So guys, let us know now in the comment if you ever seen these adverbs of sequence before. Do you know what are these adverbs of sequence before? I need you to let me know in the chat if you are able to see this in a text or, or maybe in a listening or maybe in an activity that you, ah, okay, I have seen these words. So those were our adverbs of sequence, okay? Now, when we're trying to explain a recipe, we have to take into account, obviously, all these adverbs, okay, or adverbs. So to start that explanation of that recipe, we can use in the beginning, where such as to start, in the beginning, first of all, first, okay? Then when we continue explaining that, we are having more. What is What are these? We can use, for example, a second, and then, later, after that, third, fourth, okay, next, okay? We can use these adverbs in order to have the sequence, okay? But there is like a specific point that we have in like, a, like an intersection before and after. What is this about? Are some specific word for the next? What is this? Interruption. What are these verbs? Adverbs, sorry. At this point and but then. Okay. We commonly use this when we are trying to make a specific point of the preparation. For example, if you are explaining, for example, the coconut rice recipe, you can say, it's great until the coconut soil is turned dark brown. At this point, add the rice. So did you see? Did you see how we can use it? Obviously, it's very, very useful. And at the end, obviously, we're having in the end, at the end, finally, lastly, okay, or at last. So guys, remember all these habits of sequence when you're trying to convey this recipe to other people, any recipe, you can use all these adverbs of sequence. So try to use them and make the best use of them, okay? So guys, let's gonna see, right point, perfect point for this presentation, for this event. Let's gonna test your knowledge. I'm gonna see if you're able to remember what I have said before. 
Let's gonna see with the next activity if you are able to remember what I just have already explained. So let's gonna try to check what I have explained about the average of sequence and also the verbs that you use in the kitchen. So let's gonna place with this activity. We're having this instruction for preparing the coconut rice, okay? Pay attention to this recipe. We're having A steps. And then you have to try to uh, check or like place the proper word for each step. So we're having the adverse of sequence, later, second, finally, after that, next, and first. And according to the verbs that we commonly use in this recipe, we're having the verbs add, stir, and convert. So let's, let's try to organize this, and I need your help in the chat because I won't do this alone because you will help me to do this, okay? So let's gonna start right now. Number one, heat coconut meal in a saucepan until simmering. What do you think, guys, is this about? What do you think? Let me know in the comments. Let me know in the comments what is the proper. Ah, and Andres says, ah, mm, ah, no, it's not ah, Andres. Uh, it's kind of difficult for you. No, I will help you. I will help you, Luz, because we are having later, second, finally, after that, next, and first. So first is the only, is the number one, okay? First, okay? To help you, Luz, we're having first as the adverse of sequence, okay? So you can say first heat coconut meal in a suspend until simmering, okay? But then on the second step, we're having not only an adverse of sequence, but also a verb. What do you think could be the adverse of sequence and also the verb, guys? Let me know in the comments. Let me know in the chat because I need to know right now what are the options for you. Andres say next and the verb cover. Jason says second and the verb add. Carmen says next and the verb add. William say next. Could be Gabriela say later. Mm, what else, guys, do you think is the proper word? Second, because you have already said first, then you say second, okay? And what is the verb? A stir. What is a stir? Do you remember what is the meaning of a stir? Do you remember when you stir the coconut milk with a wooden spoon? That is a stir, guys. Excellent. Very good. Step number three. Let's go to move on with step number three. Scrap constantly and the cocoon is always turned dark brown. What do you think is the proper word for this? What do you think? Later, at Elizabeth, Andres, say next. Could be after that, Excel. Very good. Exactly. You're paying attention. Excellent. After that, scrap constantly and the cocoon is always turned dark brown. Very good. Number four, what do you think is the proper word for that? We are remaining later, finally, and next. What do you think is the proper word for number four? Step number four. Jason says, next. Mm, yes, we're having later, we're having next. What do you think, guys? Joanna say, finally. Andres say later. Let's gonna have Elizabeth say later. Later, yes, very good. Number four is later, okay? Later, add rice and sugar and salt, increasing heat to medium, okay? Very good. Next one, we're having a step number five. What do you think is the proper word? We are remaining next. And finally, what do you think is the proper word for number five? Next or finally, what do you think? Camilo says later, Yolanda says before, Ruby says finally. Mm, finally, I am not sure that it is finally, uh, mm, Ruby, but maybe it could be, I don't know. What do you think, number five? Yes, Andres, next is the proper advert of sequence, next, because you say, next, stir until the grains of rice turn golden, about two minutes, okay, that's it. In number six, guys, I need you to pay attention, we're having, on number seven, number six, and number seven, we're having two verbs, 
the one remaining, the verbs cover and the verb to um, add, okay? The verb cover and the verb add. What do you think is the proper verb for number six? The proper verb for number six, everybody, yes, Camilo, Andres, Ruth says add, very good, because you say also add water on a steer to combine, okay? Exactly. Very good, guys. You are paying attention. You are understanding all this information tonight. And number seven, obviously, the, the next verb, so the last one will be cover. Very good, Andres. Very good, William. The verb cover. Exactly. Number seven, we say then cover the pot and cook for 15 minutes. And number eight, as you can see, yes, the last word we're remaining is the word Finally, okay, when you just end that recipe and you say, finally, flour with a fork and serve. So guys, easy or difficult to prepare this recipe? What do you think? Let me know in the comment. With all these eight steps, only eight steps, easy or difficult? Andre says easy. Hey, Roxana says easy. William says easy. Very good. I consider it easy. It's not difficult. No, at all. But now we're going to have like a, like a demonstration. But pay attention because maybe your doubts, maybe uh, you, you didn't understand a, a little bit or there is something that you are not clear on. But let's going to have like a short video. We are going to see how we can do this into the practice, okay? So pay attention and then let me know if it's easy or difficult again, so. Hello, my name is Kenya and today we're making coconut rice. Okay guys, this is what we need to make this delicious coconut rice. First of all, we are going to powder our compacted brown sugar. Afterwards, we are going to grate our coconut and then we're going to blend it because we want to take as much milk as we can from the natural fruit, just like this. You can use normal like coconut milk from the grocery store if you don't have like any coconuts um, in here. And then we are going to cook. We're going to boil these coconut milk. Don't forget to add your brown sugar and your pinch of salt. And we're going to let it sit and cook. We're going to stir it just a little bit until it come. It becomes like this crispy brown sugar kind of like chicharrón, <laughs> just like this. When we have like this texture ready and all the fat and oils came out, we're going to add our two cups of of rice, and we're going to let it fry just a little bit. And afterwards, we're going to add more coconut milk from these from this fruit okay just like that we're going to let it cook until it becomes like all fluffy and everything don't forget to add your your raisins okay and that is all we have to do to get this beautiful delicious coconut rice yes exactly did you see guys how can we prepare that delicious dish Obviously, you saw it that it was very, very easy. It's no difficult, anything difficult with this. So, guys, the most important of this is that you put into practice all this information by your own. Okay. And um, talking not just only about all the cut on the price, we have to also mention all other, maybe, for example, size for this specific dish. And here we have some examples that you can have. For example, the most common side for this coconut rice is the frizy bream. Frizy bream. What is frizy bream? Have you ever seen this word before? But it's just simply oh, the most common word for mojarra, mojarra fish. That is frizy bream. Okay, that's it. Okay, so as you can see here, the most common side for this dish is the fries bean. So do not uh, set aside this dish, uh, okay, for you. Another one is pasta a la cartaginera. That is also delicious. It's a kind of meat that you prepare as a steak. It's also sweetened. Even when we, heat, we have it or we eat it with the coconut rice that is also sweet. 
You can have all of them and I'm completely sure you won't regret about it, okay? Because the both are the delicious, okay? I very, very delightful, extremely, extremely, really okay for you, okay? But also we're having a hazel shrimps, okay? Also very exotic, very delicious for you because also the seafood is very, very uh, accompanied with this delicious dish of the coconut rice. So guys, what is your favorite one? Fried sea bream, posta la cartagenera, or ajillo shrimps? What do you think is the proper one for you? Let me know in the chat. What do you prefer? The coconut rice with fried sea bream, posta la cartagenera, or ajillo shrimp? Ruby said, posta la cartagenera, yes. Luz Marina, Luz Marina, ajillo, yes. Luz Marina with ajillo gets perfect, okay, fry. It's a ajillo, Sandra Posta, yes, Marta, ajillo, exactly. What is the point for this? Guys, that I need you to put into practice all of this, not only because of this presentation, but in your own kitchen, in your house, you can put into practice and you will have this delightful dish in your table, on your table, okay, guys? So is this what we have in all of this? How will you? Think about if there is something more for you tonight. Yes, I consider it. Yeah, let's go ask better Stephanie. Stephanie, do we have something more or is this is all? Tell me. Yes, of course. So hello again, guys. So I would like to know that everyone gets inspiration in different ways. So for that, I would like to inspire your inner chef with some movies that I consider that you could find so interesting. Okay. So Let's start with the first one, and this case is Raka Tui. I know that maybe everyone here watched this movie, but if you don't watch it yet, it's time to do it, okay? So, this is basically a Disney ode to French cuisine, follows a determined little Ronin Remy on his adventures, or it could be misadventures to become a chef, okay? So, I I recommend this movie, guys. It's so interesting, and now, the next one, the next one movie that I recommend you is Chef, okay? This is a Latina movie, so of course you could watch to our beautiful Toti Vergara making an awesome job, as always she made, okay? This film follows a famous chef who has become disillusioned by the restaurant business and his lack of freedom in the kitchen, as he set out on a road trip with his son and folk trust. It's clear throughout the field that this movie shows a real love for cooking and for Cuban cuisine in particular. So if you just want to hang out with some fun people who love to cook for a little while, then it's worth checking out. Okay, so now the next one movie that I recommend you is Born. Okay, so for a bit more drama, Bourne, starring Bradley Cooper, of course, will take you into the kitchen of a top restaurant striving for three Michelin stars. Laid by a chef trying to redeem himself and his career. Bourne gives an excellent look into the world of height and dining and professional kitchen, and any fan of Bradley Cooper will love his performance on this movie. It's awesome, okay? And the last one movie that I recommend you is Julie and Julia, that's it. So this movie is a drama too, and it's a story by an also actress that I love, that is Meryl Streep. In this film, she's a famous chef and cookbook writer called Julia Child, and she's charming all to the romance of, of cooking, okay? So, half of the movie is followed by child's adventure, and basically, and the another half is focused on Julia Powell. Julia is trying or is planning to cook all the 524 recipes in child's cook in 365 days, while documenting her success and disasters online. I recommend this movie, guys, if you would like to learn a little more about how to cook it, okay? So now, Excel, it's the time to finish this awesome integration that we create with, the, with our users. And to conclude this awesome night, everyone is cordially invited to Barranquilla, of course, and the Atlantic Coast in general, 
to try all the delicious dishes that we mentioned today. I encourage you guys to try this recipe, this awesome and yummy recipe that Sandri learned you today. And it's important, guys, that you put into practice all the vocabulary that we learned today. It was really a pleasure to be with you tonight. Okay? So, Excel? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I'm still here. Guys, I think we have to go out and probably have dinner together because I'm, I'm starving. <laughs> because, like, all of the examples and the dishes and we saw the fish and the shrimps and everything. And I think most of the users were as well, like saying that they were hungry. So yes, we were probably are going to go out to have dinner. So um, Stephanie, I don't know, where is the best place to try this coconut rice? Like seriously, if we go to Barranquilla, if we go to Cartagena or like the coast of your beautiful country, where should we go? Or like, okay, I don't know. I, I always want to recommend Barranquilla to try all these beautiful, all these delicious dishes. So of course Barranquilla. And if I have to choose one place here, I maybe could choose Las Flores. It's an amazing place to try to taste and to be delight all this beautiful and yummy, delighted food that we mentioned today. Wow, excellent, guys. Yes, like all of these, like it's a combination from the roots, you know, like Spanish roots, indigenous uh, roots and African roots. And I think we got like this amazing combination and it's amazing. I tried the coconut rice because I made it. I made the video. You know, my 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 friend Kenya helped me out. So shout out to Kenya. She's probably around here. And yes, so guys, I don't know. I encourage you to do a cooking video. Please, please, please. If you want to, I don't know, share a recipe from your country, from your region, I would be like, so happy to see your cooking videos. If you need some help, let me know. And we can share them. We can share them with the rest of the users. Or probably you can come here on stage and share your recipe. Who would like to do that? Probably, I don't know, probably Marcelo, probably Luz Maria, probably Yolanda. Let me know in the chat who's interested in making a cooking, a cooking video. I had so much fun reading your comments. I was here like backstage, but I saw like all your participation and it was great. I love when you guys are like chatting with us and answering all of our questions. So put me here. I don't know. Let me know. Give me more ideas. What should we do next? What should we talk about next? Would you like us to share more recipes? Would you like us to share about, I don't know, books, about movies, about countries, about regions? I don't know. Give me ideas in the chat, right? Give me ideas. Movies, okay? Somebody says movies, probably. I don't know. Give me more ideas. And, of course, I have to say happy Mother's Day. Here in Mexico, uh, Mother's Day was yesterday. But I saw a lot of moms here in the chat. So, hello. Happy Mother's Day. Uh, to all the moms in Latin America. Korean series. Wow, that's a good one. That is actually cool. We can talk about Korea, something like that. Yes, yes, I like that one. Thank you. Thank you so much, Martha. That was a good uh, a good topic. Books and adaptation for movies. Okay, trip. Excellent. Movies, Gabriela says movies. What, what, what kind of movies, Gabriela? Yes, give me more ideas. Uh, World War countries, I mean, the second World War documentaries, okay? Yeah, key dramas, <laughs> kind of like Korean novelas. No, that's a good one. Okay, guys, it is always, always a pleasure to be here with you. I know one hour isn't enough sometimes, but it's time for me to go. Uh, I had so much fun. Uh, if you do your cooking video, like share it with us, share it with me, and I would be like so glad to hear you practicing your English while you cook a delicious recipe. My name is Itzel Alcantar, live from the city of Guadalajara. Thank you so much for my team in Bogota and for these beautiful girls in the city of Barranquilla. Thank you so much for all of your beautiful users who always connect um, from around the world. I want to see you guys in two Thursdays, okay? Excellent. Okay, guys, take care, have fun. Enjoy your weekend, take pictures, okay? And most of all, practice your English, okay? See you guys, bye-bye. <laughs>